Hello and welcome to Comp 3077 Online. This is a comprehensive course in Microsoft Excel at Fanshawe College. It is offered to a variety of programs in the Lawrence Kinlan School of Business and also to students in continuing education. So welcome to all of our students across many disciplines that are taking this course. This is Microsoft Excel for Business Advanced. I am Mr. Mike Sloan. I will be your virtual professor for the asynchronous online delivery of Comp 3077. So I am the guy in the videos. I am a full-time marketing professor here at the Lawrence Kinlan School of Business, and I am also the course leader for Comp 3077, and I love Excel, and I love to teach this course. So I'm the guy you got to put up with in the videos uh, for the rest of the semester, but I may or may not be your professor for this course, depending on the semester you're taking it in and which section you have, and that can be verified in FOL. So you will always contact your professor, who, your instructor, who you have for your particular section for any course-related matters, but you will be working with me in the context of these pre-recorded videos. The expectation going into the online version of this course is the face-to-face -face students can use these videos for any anything they want, but they should be attending class, and the online students should be going through everything in FOL. In fact, all of our students should be doing that face-to-face -face or online, but the expectation is that you always are on FOL reading through all the course information, all the course material, especially at the beginning of the course, because this is our week one introductory lecture. There will be a few videos in week one to cover everything we're covering in week one, maybe a couple in week two, and then most videos, uh, most weeks, I should say, for the videos, they'll have one video demonstrating the casework for that week. Everything will be explained here, but it's going to be much easier on you if you've already gone through the information in Fanshawe Online. So there is a, well, there is a, a stern expectation. I don't mean to be stern about anything. You guys are are paying good money to go to a great school, and we want to give you a great education. But you need, as online students, you need to be in Fanshawe Online reading the course material and keeping up to date with anything that's posted in there, especially at the beginning. So without further ado, Let's get started with our very first online class. This will be a required video. You'll notice that as I, as I dis disseminate these videos out to you online through the rest of the semester, most of you, if you're taking this course after the first semester when I've recorded them, will just see them all there right at the beginning. I will always note if it's required or not. Almost all the videos will be required. Once in a while, we'll have one that I've just thrown in some extra content that I found that I thought was really beneficial for that particular week's topics, and it might be optional, but most of the videos that you'll see there are required. And once again, I, I know I keep repeating myself, but there's, there's a lot to be said for redundancy and online learning. It does work. You need to be keeping up to date on everything that's in Fanshawe Online. So with that, we will define what is Excel today together in this introductory lecture. We're going to talk about the versions of Excel you should be using, where you get them from. Who is your professor? I'm going to again remind you that while you are, you know, and it's a pleasure to meet you in the context of these online videos, I am probably not your professor for the section of Comp 3077 that you are in. So you can verify that in FOL. We'll talk about the way the course is set up, the resources and anatomy, talk about MOS, the evaluations, and then we'll get into FOL and the role it plays versus SAM and the role it plays. So Fanshawe Online is where all the information and all the due dates and everything are. But there's this other website that you're going to use in this course where you submit the vast majority of your work. And that's called SAM. So I'll show you how to set that up. That'll be in a separate video, actually, setting that up. And then I'll kind of wrap up with some tips on how to use the virtual classroom. So this shouldn't take too long because there are going to be a few videos in week one. This is just the video where you're going to get your head around how everything works in the course. So let's start with what is Excel? Excel is a computer software application. Probably you all know that most of you have probably used it. So I'm going to send you over to uh, check out a video. And this will likely be in your FOL course homepage or on it, posted on it, unless your professor has sort of change the setup in terms of what she or he 
would like to have on the course homepage right at the beginning of the course. I find this video pretty entertaining and there's a purpose for it too uh, in discussing the power of Excel and why it's such a such an amazing tool for any business-minded person, even for a person just keeping track of their own personal life. So we're going to have you watch the video. I'm going to have you pause my video and watch this video, and then you're going to come back and we're going to keep going. So if you don't see it in the course homepage, because in a later semester, a professor has kind of changed things up a little bit, maybe it's posted in the week one material, just navigate over to YouTube, um, to put in uh, Microsoft 1990 commercial, 1990 Microsoft Excel video, whatever you do, it, it'll just pop right up. It should be right on the top. So give this a view and pause my video first, give this a view and then come back and we'll keep talking. Okay, thanks for doing that. I do find it quite entertaining how tight people wore their ties back in 1990. Uh, as the little blurb on the screen noted, I'm not sure if you caught that, Excel was released in 1985. Uh, it was popular right from the get-go by 1990. It had gained a lot of market traction. What I love about that commercial is that the things those guys are doing with Excel in that commercial are still the same today. So many software applications and technologies and different innovations are obsolete within a matter of years, if not months sometimes, yet Excel has been the same the whole time and it keeps getting improved and getting more streamlined and efficient, but the way they used autofill, still the same today. The way they took the entire section of content within that spreadsheet and moved it without losing any format or any calculations, it's still the same today. And that demonstrates the power of what Excel can do for people. So what do I consider it? Most most instructors would just call it a spreadsheet application. It's a spreadsheet application. You can put a bunch of data in there and crunch numbers. It's a heck of a lot more than that. To me, Excel organizes your life. It is a life organizer and it takes robust amounts of data in, in terms of numbers, like so numerical and text and allows you to organize it and sort it and format it and present it, which is even better. I used to use Excel for sales presentations in a way that just makes everything easier. So Excel is a life organizer. It's, it's an efficiency power machine. It just gets the job done. And my background, and I'm not going to get into a full-blown professor introduction because that's most of your professors will have information on what they do in FOL. But I worked in sales for a big telecommunications company. I ran my own business. I had a wakeboard surf shop. Uh, I was in a band for years and used to keep track of all our merchandise sales. I used Excel for everything all the time for all of these businesses. I now do a little bit of real estate aside from my job at Fanshawe College, Fanshawe First. But it's, again, Excel is nonstop ever present in all of these professions. It's just the best tool ever. And I love that even back in 1990, some of, the, some of the same things we love about Excel today are still being used. So I know some of you have taken that introductory course that gives, gives you the full, uh, the four, sorry, the four main apps in Microsoft and the basic presentation of them. And there's a little bit of Excel in that. This course is all about how to really use Excel to make your job more efficient, to make your life better, to gain sales, to gain market share, to do all these things. So even from the very beginning with the, the most basic case, you're still going to learn a lot of trips and uh, trips, tips and tricks and tools that you didn't pick up on the first time around. So we are going to start with the very basics, which starts with defining Excel. So next on the list would be who is your professor? So covering all the items we're covering here today, let me alt tab over. That's a great keyboard shortcut. We talk about keyboard shortcuts in week one. Um, don't assume that I'm your professor just because I'm the guy in the videos. When you go to your course homepage, your professor uh, information should be here. And if you go into content, you might see your professor information with a bit of a biography also here. But the the best way to verify who your professor is, because sometimes the professors may have gotten the course over from me because I'm the course leader and they might not have had a chance, like if you're in there right at the beginning of week one, to change that information around, you should go to the class list. And in class list, 
you'll be able to see who's teaching the course. If, you, if you're on the staff tab, that's your professor. So that's how you get in touch with your professor to ensure that you know, you know exactly who you should be talking to about course-related matters during the semester when you're taking it. But I'm still happy to be the guy in the video. So moving on to the next item, okay? What's happening on FOL? What are all the resources? How is the course set up? And what is MOS? So let's quickly get into those details. So we're gonna jump back into FOL again. And this would likely start with the course homepage. If your professor, not every professor uses one of these all-in news items. And that's what this is. It's an all-in news item. It, it's sort of guiding you into the course and getting you all the spots you should be touching on without you having to go through them all, even though the expectation is that you should be going through them all. So this gets you going. Uh, I'm not going to cover everything in the video because that would be like I'm just reading all this to you when it's already in FOL. I'm just making sure you're aware this is here. The main starting point would be go to course content, check out the course outline and the course plan. So funny I'm bringing up the course plan because one thing that used to drive me nuts when I graduated from high school and went on to several degrees in higher education. I don't know why I like school that much, but it's school is the best, I guess it's School gets you places, people. Trust me, it does. So I have in the course outline a description of the course and all the course outcomes, and I would recommend reviewing that so you can understand what it is that you're going to be learning. But the course plan, unlike what you see in other courses, and I, I will download, download this for you quickly and just show you how I have it set up. It breaks down everything per item, per week, exactly what's going to be done. And there's like four other places in FOL where you're going to find the same thing. So nobody can come into this course and say, oh, I didn't know what was going on at the beginning. I, I didn't know we had this many evaluations. Every single week is broken down here and it talks about what's due every week and when it's done. So as I mentioned, most of this will be done on that website called SAM. There's a few little things on FOL and I'll break that down in a second here. Uh, but it's here in the course plan. It is also, if you go into the getting started section, there's a really nice breakdown of it right here, course schedule and due dates. And these are non-date specific. So whenever you're watching this video, this is typically when these are gonna be due. Unless your professor has created a custom schedule and that may be the case if you're in a face-to-face -face section, all of my online sections, your stuff comes in in the weeks like this, okay? And it's typically due Sunday night, all right? And we have work due right away in week one. so. And, and you should know this. It's also posted in the checklist, which is under resources. So if you go to the week one course orientation, this is what we're, I'm trying to get you guys through now. So you need to review all the getting started items, watch the virtual classroom video, what you're doing now to make sure you reviewed the items, and then get into the week one readiness file and take the FOL quiz and do your first case, which falls into this list. So this is another list that shows you when now you're going to ignore these deadlines. This is why I didn't want to focus on this list because it has time specific dates. Obviously, these will be different if you're watching this in a different semester. Um, but you can see it's all here. Even if you go to course content, just so you didn't have to separately go into a module to find it, I put it again right here. So all over the place and including your FOL calendar, which I don't need to focus on either because it'll have different dates. But that checklist that I just showed you that populates the FOL calendar along with a couple things that are due in the FOL Dropbox and the quiz. It's all here. So you, you start working right away in week one. This is not difficult work to accomplish, especially if you get into the routine of things. So I'm just, my main goal here with this particular, um, uh, phase of the lecture that we're on, which is where are the resources, what's the course anatomy, is to show you that it's all there. And then every week in FOL, there's a weekly content item that talks about what's covered that week. There's a lot more files in week one because it's the beginning of the course and there's a bunch of stuff we have to go over. And it gives you important things like this code that you need to set up your SAM account. Everybody will use that and then you have to purchase a key code. Um, it gives you a link to the readiness file, it talks about MOS. 
So it talks about this language setting issue you might run into. So you need to go into all this stuff if you're an online student and make sure that you've got it all covered. And that's why if I go back around in a circle to the initial news item on the course homepage, this is a good way to get started because it gives you the breakdown that you need to get familiar with the course, set up an account in SAM, make sure somewhere in between here you have the, uh, the most recent version of Microsoft Office you can get, which is free as a Fanshawe student. Uh, you don't have to buy SAM right away. I'm going to talk about all that in a second. You'll get into a SAM section. Then here's a few reminders, technical reminders. Chrome's the best browser to use, even though you can't use a Chrome book in this class. And uh, yeah, that's it. And then you're you're up and running. One more note I'm, I do want to make, and I'm going to jump right into the required learning and resources down here. I'm jumping around a little bit. All this information is on Fanshawe Online. The expectation, once again, is that you go through all of this. The reason I'm jumping around is because there are specific things that I want to make sure I point out in the introductory lecture, uh, while other stuff you can just read through. Um, you need to have an updated version of Microsoft Office. You cannot be working at home on like 2010 or 2013 or even 2016, which we just finished using in this course. We are now on 2019 and Office 365. Office 365 will look very, very similar to 2019, which is what I'm using in my videos because that's what the college gives me on my machine. And it's the most robust and it's what is in all the labs. And believe it or not, even though this course is delivered fully online, I have more students that are in my face-to-face -face sections and that work in the labs watching these videos than the students at home. But 365 and 2019 are almost identical. There might be little tiny things in some of my video demonstrations you'll see that are slightly different, but you need to upgrade. If you happen to be on 2019, that's great. You can't be any earlier than that. It has to be 2019 or later. 2021 would also be fine if you happen to be that on top of stuff. Depending on when you're watching this video, 2021 might be kind of old by now, but Fanshawe will be sticking with 2019 for several years now, so we're upgrading the videos. Office 365 is just a really slightly more packaged up version of 2019. It looks very, very similar, and it's what you can get for free from Fanshawe College. So this link is available in the getting started section. We are on the required software and resources area and you would just simply click on it. And I do wanna point something out here. These are, there's a couple things when I was down in that little list of things to watch out for in that news item. One of the things was this, the other thing is that you can't reuse SAM if you've bought it any, any sooner, any earlier in time then fall of 2022, and I'll explain that in a second. So you would go here, click on Office 365. I clicked on the link from FOL, go read the instructions. What you're gonna do is set up an account at office.com, which is very simple to do with your Fanshawe online credentials. And once you get in, as of January, 2022, Microsoft is now offering a cloud version of the Office suite. That is not what we are working in. In this course, we are not working in the cloud version. You must install the actual applications right here. It's kind of handy to have that if you need it, especially while you're working at Fanshawe, if you want to do something on the fly. But for the most part, in the business world, you will have the installed suite on computers at your office, wherever you're working. This is what we need to be using in this class for now. We may eventually upgrade to the cloud version or downgrade as far as I'm concerned but you need to make sure it's installed. I've had several students go in and they're working on their cases, which we're gonna learn about in a minute, their SAM cases in the cloud. And then they're trying to get the file to download and submit it and it's not compatible with SAM. So you need to have the Office Suite installed on your computer. It is free of charge as a Fanshawe student. Again, you simply need to follow the lead from this link here and download the Office Suite onto your computer. Notice how I have the word download in bold because so many students starting in January of 2022 started using this cloud version and it was very frustrating for the professors. The only other thing you need, which is not free, but it is free for the first two weeks, is access to this website right here, sam.sendgage.com. And in order to have access to it, you can just click on new user and start using it right away, right now. But after two weeks, your access will expire and you are not to create a new account. 
that really messes up our status as a SAM user at Fanshawe College, you need to keep using the same account and simply activate it with a paid key code. If you already have the key code, you can put it in when you're setting up the account. There will be a separate video on setting up the SAM account, but we're gonna talk more about that uh, in a second as I get into the whole SAM thing. But the reason I wanted to bring it up now is because if you purchase SAM prior to fall of 2022, you do need to buy it again. I'm so sorry about that. There's no workaround for it. There's literally no workaround. MOS is one thing I did wanna talk about. You saw that link in the week one uh, instruction and resources file. That's a link to get you to a page that helps you find an MOS testing center. MOS stands for Microsoft Office Specialist. So this is defined here in what's called a structured result by Google. You pass an exam and you're MOS certified in a Microsoft application. So this course is designed around the MOS curriculum that Microsoft has. But unlike some of the other programs at other schools, Fanshawe does not like to mix in professional certifications with full-time programs. You can go and get your MOS in continuing education. It's a separate fee, that's why. It's, it, gets, it gets sloppy when you start mixing in um, Microsoft fees with actual college fees. So I think it's still 50 bucks. It's, I know it's not expensive, guys. They're always changing the price, so I don't want to say a price outright in the video here, and then you see it and you expect it to be something else. But it's pretty easy to do if you get through this course and you've done well in the course. But the reason I bring it up is because I just want to make it clear to students, you're not going to be MOS certified by having taken this course, but you would definitely be MOS trained, which you could put on your resume. And if you want to go and take a MOS test, which certifies you in a Microsoft application, the link in week one that I had uh, passed over there briefly would show you where to go and do that. So I can jump back over there for a second. Go to content, week one, week one instructions and resources. There's lots of stuff in week one because we're just getting started. Want to make sure all the information is there and everybody gets set up and ready to go. So if you go down, 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 down. Where, no, I passed it. There, check for MOS testing centers in your area. So to be very clear, you will not be MOS certified even if you get an A plus in comp 3077, but I sure as heck would guess that you're gonna pass the MOS certification test with flying colors if you go and do it right after you're done with the course. And if you really wanna bulk up your resume, you can get certified in Word, PowerPoint, maybe Outlook as well. If you're certified in four of them, you're, you're considered a full blown MOS expert. So that's what MOS is all about. And we are doing okay here for time. I wanted to kind of keep this around 20 minutes. So it might be a little bit longer. Uh, evaluations, deliveries, delivery, and deadlines. So, and this is going to kind of bleed into the next two because evaluations I've gone over, I've shown you all these different locations for where you can go and confirm when stuff is due. One of the obvious ones, which is one of the last ones I didn't show you, would be your FOL calendar. So if you're not one to go through FOL content, which again, as I opened the video, the expectation is that along with these videos, you're going in each week and looking at the instructions and resources file and making sure you're in the right place and you're doing the right thing. The most reading you're going to have to do is all in week one with all the information you have to get set up in the course, because we can't come and set you up in the SAM website for you. And we're going to we're going to get you started on that in this video, and I'll have a separate video on how to set it up. Um, but the FOL calendar will always kind of have the dates, assuming your professor has set that up, and most will because of the way I've set it up through the um, through the checklist now, which is under resources. I'm in the, in the right place in the first place. So the checklist items that are weekly are all connected to the calendar, and then I can easily go in and set the dates uh, more quickly all at once. I don't have to create a bunch of calendar items. It's created from the checklist. And then there's a few things you do on FOL as well. And those will come from the FOL quiz. The due date will come in from there and um, the submissions box. So there's a one quiz on FOL. So here's the deal. FOL is where all the information is on due dates and others. Sam, this website right here, which we're going to get to in a sec, is where almost every single thing is done in the course except 
the very first quiz, which will be done on FOL, because it's just like a basic workspace. I quiz you on some keyboard shortcuts quiz. It's FOL. And there's an extra credit item, which is described in the weekly content. I'll let you guys go in and take a look at that. I need to get into extra credit too much in here, but it's a submission box submission. So there's a quiz and an FOL submission box in the first couple of weeks. The quiz is due at the end of week one. Submission box would be at the end of week two. If you get your key code by then, you could just take a picture of it and show me that you got it. You get 1% extra credit or me, whoever your professor is. Then ultimately, at, after you've done all your SAM cases, which are case files, they're Excel files you submit to this website, you'll do a custom file in week 13, and that will be on FOL. Literally, those are the only three things that are on FOL. A total of 6% of your mark, or seven if you count the 1% extra credit. Everything else will be done on this website called SAM. Okay, so what I just did there was in our itinerary here, uh, I covered the purpose of FOL while I was talking about the evaluations and how they're going to be delivered. What I didn't mention was deadlines. So here's the deal with deadlines. Pretty much you could see that all the dates are in there. You just refer to your FOL calendar. But if you want to simplify it even more in your head, just remember that other than the two test weeks, which are week six and week 14 in this course, and in week 14, typically I don't advise professors to push this into exam week because then if there's any SAM issues, which there very rarely would be, the proctor in a Comp 3077 exam who's never taught the course might not have any idea what to do. So we like to get our final test done in week 14. You won't have anything in exam week, but the weekly deadline outside of those two weeks, week six and week 14 when you have a test is almost always going to be Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. So Sunday at midnight. Unless your professor has decided to do something slightly different because of an odd schedule or a summer schedule, I'm not sure, but that's the, the schedule I recommend. And 99% of the time, that's the deadline you're going to have. But if you're ever in question of it, just go into FOL and everything should be explained there. Uh, so the purpose of FOL in this course, more than anything, is to, it's like your home base, your, your, your main communications hub for everything that's going to go on in this course and what's happening. Moving on to the next place, you're going to go to almost every week. Well, pretty much every single week in this course, in addition to FOL, the SAM website, this is where you will submit the majority of your work because it will be auto graded. So in SAM, you will have these case files that you'll download You'll follow all the instructions and do everything to the file and then save and upload for a mark and you'll get your marks immediately. And then marks are transferred from SAM to FOL at least once every couple of weeks. They're not, they don't transfer automatically. So don't be all over your professors about that, but they will transfer. And you'll know as long as you turn it in by the deadline, you're going to have that mark go over to FOL. And if there's any discrepancies ever, you just email your professor. Um, you will also take quizzes in SAM. So the quizzes are a little different than the cases. The case file is a file you download and you do it, you'll see it in the, in the first case demonstration for the week one case. And then you submit it, you save it, you submit it. You're not being graded by Sam throughout the process of doing it. There are also quizzes each week associated with the concepts on the case. And the quizzes will ask you to complete single tasks and you'll be graded per task. And those are actually pass fail. And there'll be a separate video for that in week two when the SAM quizzes start. Because in week one, you only have a SAM case. That's it. So SAM, as a separate platform in this course, which I do have opened up for you, oop, not there, right here, is accessible from this website. And while you will have to purchase this software, and Again, I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, but it is clarified in a couple different places in FOL. I'm so sorry to students who bought this prior to the fall of 2022, and we'll now have to buy it again, but you will. I know in the previous version of the course when we were on Excel 2016, students who bought SAM could keep using it. And, and the only reason this would have happened is because you failed the course, and I'm sorry about that, but you will have to purchase it again now as of fall 2022. If any of you are watching this video and you already bought it in fall of 2022 and are taking the course later, that should still work. The SAM key code will last for two semesters once you activate it. 
uh, but you do not need to buy it right away. This is, I always have students make this excuse, like, or provide an excuse. Well, I couldn't afford the key code, so I didn't do any work. So you got to let me make it up. That's, that's not true. It's free for two weeks. All you have to do is click on new user, set up your account. There'll be another video in the week one collection of videos showing you just how to set up your SAM account, a nice quick one. Um, all the links in FOL will take you to this page where you can buy it. I would prefer if you were on campus, you went to the bookstore and picked it up, but I realize that not all of you have that access. You can also buy it from the bookstore website. Um, and I would recommend that as well, but that, yeah, the easiest way is just to click on the links in FOL and purchase it right here. Don't change this. Okay. If there's a reason the link is set for you to buy that. That's the one you want and you'll be good to go. Okay. But you don't have to do it right away. You can set up your SAM account for free right now and start working. Um, back to, uh, the required resources. Cause we are talking about SAM right now. Um, that don't forget that you get this for free. You need Microsoft Office and it's free, okay? And you get the newest version here. You can't be working on 2016, 2010, 2013. You need 2019 or later or Office 365, which is free and available right here. And you just need to go in and follow those instructions to pick up those resources and you'll be good to go at home. I might move some of that content further up in this lecture just to make sure you guys are on top of that. There's one thing I wanted to point out here. So they give you all these instructions. Make sure when you get in there, you don't start using the cloud version of the software. You need to install the software. Okay, it's very important that you do that. And that pretty much covers everything we were gonna cover in this video, except one final thing, the virtual classroom. So the videos I'm gonna be posting now, the majority of them will be set up using chapters. And this will make it easier for students, especially if you're ahead of the game on some of these cases, to navigate around and only look at the parts that you need to watch if you don't need to watch the video, because the videos will literally show you every step in every case. Um, so chapters, you will always see these little hashes. This came out a couple years ago on YouTube. It's brilliant. And typically, when you have chapters, and I'll set up something like this, I'll have links down here linking you to each chapter with a bit of a description. These guys actually have images, which is probably a little more than you're gonna see at the bottom of my videos, but this is just an example of a video with chapters. So in addition to just sort of finding the, the hashes and trying to click right in them, when videos have chapters, you'll be able to click chapters here and it should pull them up here. I'm just saying I might not do icons for every one of my chapters, but uh, I may too. I mean, it's just an easy way to navigate around, which will make it easier to navigate this particular introduction too, in terms of understanding where everything is discussed throughout the introduction. I also had left some of the older videos in the previous, well, it's the same virtual classroom. I'm just updating all the videos. So it'll be built like this. And these videos, see, they're not even, so all the week one videos will be there. Week two video will be here. It'll all be in this order so that, um, and I did a video for that. Wow, that's really I don't know how that got in there. I don't want to put videos up for extra credit. So I can just remove that from the playlist. But these, this is just old stuff to show you how the playlist will build out. Um, so if you're seeing this the first semester, it's being built out. Uh, I might be slightly behind because of some technology issues. Welcome. You know, they're not Excel issues. Uh, I was just waiting on the approval for this software. But we're good to go and we're rocking and rolling now. So, so that's how the course will run. And that concludes uh, everything we were going to discuss. Let's go back up to the summary here. In this introductory lecture, it, it did go a little longer than I wanted to, but we definitely talked about what is Excel. Um, I have to plug in the content I made separately for that, make sure everybody knows where to get the resources, how to identify for sure who your professor is, how the course is set up, MOS, evaluations, FOL, SAM, and the virtual classroom. So thank you for being here. You're going to love this course. Follow along, keep up with the weekly work, and you're going to do really well. And the more weekly work you don't miss, the better you're going to do on the test. Hopefully you don't miss any. So welcome to online learning. Welcome to Comp 3077. This will be the most practical course you probably take in your entire educational career here at Fanshawe. You're going to use this constantly as soon as you're done with this class. I will see you in the next one.